Hey folks, in this video I'm going to be talking about two of the most important built-in functions in Python. So if you don't know what a built-in function is, stay tuned for the rest of this video. But if you're a new viewer, welcome to my channel. And if you're returning, welcome back. I have collated a huge list of HackerRank solutions in Python and Linux, and they are coming your way. If you want to really learn how to become a data scientist, data engineer, ML ops engineer, system administrator, and AI engineer, which is the hot topic these days, stay tuned in my channel and you will not regret that. Let's kick this one out of the park. This is how I'm going to be running you through this problem. I've got a Jupyter Lab on the right hand side of my screen. That will help me to teach you how to do this. And I've got HackerRank on the left hand side. I'll be playing with those windows so that it makes your life easier when you're viewing it on the screen. So this one is called any or all, and I'm just going to hit solve challenge and show you how to get this one done. Let me show you what the task is. We're talking about the any function and the all function. I'm not going to read through the explanation on HackerRank. Trust me, I can do way better than that. But the task is you are given a space separated list of integers. So you will be given something like this. If all the integers are positive, so condition number one, if all of them are positive, so you can quickly see that we will be using the all function, then you need to check if any integer is a palindromic integer. So I'll be using the all function and the any function so that I can understand if the answer is true or false. So then you might ask, hey, Amir, what is a palindromic integer? Well, I can click on that hyperlink and that tells me any number that you read from the left to right or from the right to left reads the same. For example, number zero, it's the same in both directions. Number six, seven, eight, nine, 11. 11 is 11 in both directions. 101, 111, 121. So any number that if you read from this way and from this way, that's the same thing. So that's called a palindromic integer. Back to this. The input format will be that the first line contains an integer n. So that's five in this example. n is the total number of integers in the list. So if the user says five, they will give me five integers. If they say 100, they will give me 100 integers. Let me have a sip of my coffee before I continue. And the output format print true if all conditions of the problem statement are satisfied. Otherwise, print false. So let's jump to JupyterLab because I'm sure you will really enjoy this video. So we're talking about an input that comes from the user, which is number one. Well, that's easy. I've got a link up the top right that will take you through how the input function works. But for now, let's call this n and use the integer function to get the input from the user and convert it from a string to an integer. So that's line number one done. Now, if I want to take the next line from the user, which is maybe I will call it numbers, if you like, I will be taking that through the input function as well. So the user gives it to me and I will take it using the input function. But these are space separated. Again, if you haven't seen my video on the input function, the link is up the top right. So I will need to split them based on their space. So if you've got a number 12 space 9 space da 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 you can use that space to break 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 so that's what i will do i will use the split function which uses the space to break them but the problem is after it breaks them they are still a string i need integers well i could do something not very smart and assume this is going to work it's not going to work you can only do this when you have one single input to convert from string to an integer this is not one single string, it's a list of strings. So what I have to do, instead of doing it this way, I have to say, I'm going to use the math function. If you haven't seen my video on the math function, the link will be up the top right very soon. So map integer and close it. What this one does takes these number of inputs, which are in string format, and converts them one by one to an integer and stores them in whatever you like. I like to store them in a list. You can store them in a set if you want and such and such. So far, I think I have covered the inputs. Let me run this. I will replicate exactly this example. So we have five numbers and I will copy the list from here and paste it here. 
and you will soon see that if I print the numbers, they are 12, 9, 61, 5, and 4. So let me quickly ask you a question before I code this. Do you think the answer for this exercise should be a true or false? Leave me in the comment if you think it should be true or false, but I think I can do that. They are all positive, which condition number one is good. And are there any palindromes? The question is not, they all have to be palindromes. It's if there is any palindrome. Well, this is not a palindrome. This is a palindrome. This is not. This is and this is not. So I have two palindromic numbers there. So that condition also is a tick. So tick for all of them positives and tick there is at least one palindromic number there. So I should get a true, but let me code it for you. If you haven't really used conditionals in Python, let me show you very quickly. So I have two conditions here. What I will do, I'll call that condition number one and condition number two. Both of these should be true for me to be able to get true answer. So if this is true and this is false, then the answer will be false. I need true and true here. So what is condition number one? Um, let me just make a new cell. For me, condition number one is something like this. And remember, this is not a code. I'm just taking notes here. So I might just make this a comment. So condition number one is all of those numbers up there in the numbers list is positive. So all I need to do is to say for number in numbers, if number is greater than zero, then print true. You will see that all those numbers are true, 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 true. But is this going to really help me in making condition number one? It's a bit of a longer way of writing and it's a bit of a different way of keeping track. I can do something smart. I can use the all function, so which will look like this, all. And the condition is if x is greater than zero for x in numbers. You now will see that in one line of code, I checked if all of those numbers are greater than zero. So this is an interesting way of writing code. It's a bit more professional. I will be putting up a video on that one. Link will be up the top right. But for now, all I can say is that this is my condition number one. So I will copy condition number one and I will paste it here. I have my condition number one done and dusted. It's a true one. Now I need to make condition number two. Condition number two will be very much similar to this. So let me copy all of that, paste this one here, call this condition two, and my condition number two will not be an all, it will be an any function. So what is the condition number two? If they are palindromic integers, means that if you read it from here and you read it from here, that's the same thing. For me to be able to do that, all I have to do is to change this condition because I will still be checking every single number. All I need to do is that, no, I don't care about positives anymore. All I need is I will have to convert each number to a string and then check if it is exactly the way it looks if I were to write it from back to front. You may ask, hey, what exactly are you doing? Let me show it to you before I run this. What I was trying to do is, so look, if, if I have something called A, B, C, B, A, you would agree that this is the same thing if you read it from the left to right and right to left, right? If I run this the other way from back to front, you will see that it's exactly the same. But if I change this to something that is not palindromic, you will see that when I read it from the end to the front, it's a different thing. So this is what exactly I did. I needed to convert every number to a string because if it's not a string, I can't do what exactly I did here. I could do this because this was a string. So I converted both of them to a string and I read it one format just normal, the other format from the end to the front. And now I am checking, is any of these numbers in this list under this condition true? Let me run that. You will see that I got a true here as well. So I will delete this one here. So I've got my condition one and condition two. Going back here, I will need an and operator. So let me write 
condition one, right? And put an and there and then drop my condition two in front of it. I will extend my screen so that you better can see. And if I print the result of such comparison, you will see that the result is true. So let's copy some of the code back to HackerRank and see if we have successfully completed this task. So I will go up. What I will need is the input from the user. So copy that and paste that here. And the next thing I will need is exactly the last line. I will drop it down here. Let me extend hacker rank. I'll move my face and we will run the code very shortly and fingers crossed it will be correct. So the first test case was correct. If I submit the code, more test cases, all of them successful. Thank you for watching. Share this video with your friends. Hit the like button and leave me a comment if you want to see more videos on different topics. More than happy to do that.